New Horizons, Miss Baxter. Sorry. That's what it's called. It symbolises the coming together of the three schools. That, at any rate, is what Mr Glover claims. Oh, Mr Glover. I'm on a no need of a hand in it somewhere. He's a parent governor, Jack, not some sort of saboteur. You wait till the kids see that, then you talk to me about sabotage. I mean, look at it. I mean, it's a challenge. That thing is an open invitation for him to get up to some sort of mischief. Well, maybe Mr Glover sees school children in a different light. At any rate, we can't hold him personally responsible when he was simply donating it to us on behalf of the local Rotarians. Yeah, but did we ask for it? No. I understand it was originally commissioned for the new shopping precinct, but certain people felt it to be out of keeping with the spirit of commerce. Certain people? It was due to stand outside Mr. Glover's car spare shop. Oh, 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 it's that man again. You're trying to tell me he's not personally responsible for that thing? I mean, who accepted it on our behalf? Mr. Humphreys. New Horizons, eh? So what was our art-loving headmaster think of it now, in situ, as it were? <laughs> he hasn't seen it yet. Oh, he crept in by another door, has he? He has yet to creep in at all this morning, by the look of things. Not here yet, on the first day back. Talk about style as you mean to go on. Now, now, he may have some perfectly valid reason for being late again. <laughs> morning, Mr. Griffiths. Oh, good morning. Good morning. morning. Good morning. All right. Kid thinks he's old. You gonna do something about it, Vince? Me and Trevor might. Me and Trevor. Staying up there. What is it to you? Nothing. I'm glad to keep your mouth shut. I can keep my mouth shut. I said shut, not shut. Melda, come on, it's your idea. I'm warning you. I'm shaking. <laughs> well, he said Annette Thornton weren't coming back to find you. She ain't. Well, what's she doing over there, then? Oh, where? In the pond, having a paddle. <laughs> oh, funny. How <laughs> on earth is it? <laughs> really last time. You mean it's not Furman? Don't be silly, Kev. It's Humphreys. He's had it done to remind us what he looks like. You two are stupid. No, nah, it's definitely Humphreys. It's got his nose. One thing for sure, it certainly ain't old Rowley. <laughs> Did you see it? Just about. I thought you was going to say something. I didn't dare at me mouth and I killed myself laughing. What does he look like? I say. Yeah, it's that mark. Woo! It's that mark. It's street all. It's in my bed, doesn't it? Smart, I haven't heard it. A few weeks, listen, I've just been over the old site for nothing. How come no one told me we serve an assembly over here? Because I need all the stuff I've read for the first morning. So we've all got to be crammed in that pokey little wall? I'm having two assemblies, Zemo. One for us and one for the juniors. Just like last year. We've all got next tenants about it. You will odd, didn't? No, the person must have it in for you. He deliberately slung yours away. I want to where I was talking to you. Free country, innit? I didn't say it was. Well, I don't need your permission to talk, do I? You make me sick at times. Oh, you don't exactly give me an appetite. Your turn off things, Emma. Stop stirring, Kev. So you packed him up then, have you? I'll mind your own business, Balon. Oh, what did I do? Here, Robbie. What? Come here, will ya? Just come here. Hey, what's happening between Zamo and Jackie? Why ask me? She's your sister. I don't mean she tells me anything, no. I don't expect her to. If you've got eyes, you must notice things now and again. I should have known better. Hey, was that right? And it's not coming back to Grange Hill? Her man's got married again. They've moved away to Milton Keynes. Oh, wild. Furman will really love it there. Hurry up. Where are you going to put it anyway? Chris Bellywum. Look, it's that Amelda Davis. 
just walk past. Don't say nothing. I won't if you don't say nothing to me. Ronnie, don't. I ain't scared of her. You ought to be. She's mental. I still ain't scared of her. Get ready. Yeah. Now. Where's the pot? I'm tight. Wriggly. You dropped it then. That's a light frog you've got then. My mind. What big eyes you've got. That's cruel. Put it back. Oh, you'll do what? Just put it back, right? I'll tell you where I will put it. No, hey. you won't. You're going to be sorry for that. You two all right? I hate that. People messing around with animals. So do I. And I hate to see girls fighting and all. Two sisters are always stacking each other. They ain't the school? No, no. Ashley's 70. She just started grey levels. Her kids are in all levels in June. They're her kids? Michelle, my other sister. She's 15. They're both staying in Liverpool with me, Auntie. I'll tell them the exams. Liverpool, is that where you're from? E bad bum wouldn't think so, would you? I'm not from Yorkshire, Divvy. All right, Ronnie, you must sound funny to him. Yeah, you do. Don't you like your sound then? Well, give us a chance. We've been down here since August. That's why I had my chance to get a uniform. But I like certain parts of London, though. Oh, fancy yourself, do you? I'm Ziggy. <laughs> She's blushing. Shut up, Ronnie. Oh, well, I was a smart one. Look at him. Hey! Oh, hey. <laughs> 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 He's chatting up Donna and a balls. He's welcome. That ain't the point. He's taking liberties. We're gonna have him, Trev. We'll never do something about it by the looks of it. Come in. Any sight of yet? No, I've telephoned his home. Mrs. Humphrey says he left at 7.30. It's a 20-minute journey, 30 minutes at the most. Perhaps his car's broken down. Well, surely you'd have phoned in. Well, I don't know. Cars can break down in some awkward places. Mm. Well, our immediate problem is assembly. Do you want me to? No, it's all right. I'll take it. All right. Lines and no talking. Come head shift. Hey up. Come head shift. You're not in our class. How do you know? You weren't in it last year. It's a way in here last year. What class are you? A2 or R2? Don't you push them onto us, right? You shut your face, baby. You're gonna make me. Come along now. Get yourself into your correct form. Groupings. R2, E2. R2, E2. He was in Star Wars, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> All right, time five. Let's set an example and file out quietly, shall we? You two, Banks. Banks? Sir? The top lip lad, there's something on it. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. It's a moustache, sir. It's a what? Brave attempt, but I think you'd be well advised to get rid of it. It's up to me, isn't it? Now then, Banks, Mr. Kennedy's asking you nicely. You're a fifth former now, aren't you? One year away from the outside world. You're semi-adult. It doesn't mean you can look semi-human, does it? Well, let's see it off by tomorrow. It's not against school rules. No, And you've both got moustaches. And when you're capable of growing one, we'll have no objection. Because comes that happy day, you'll be long gone from Grange Hill. Until then, don't make yourself look ridiculous. Shave it off. On second thoughts, don't bother to shave it off. Stick it out in the corridor, the draft will blow it off. Stephen. <laughs> Eric Greaves. Miss? E2. So just stay where you are. No more fuss. <laughs> You've all been very patient so far. Just two more announcements. Firstly, certain areas of the upper school are temporarily out of bounds. Now, there's no great mystery in this. We are simply having part of the heating system overhauled, and the job will be completed a lot more quickly if the engineers don't have curious school children to contend with. Settle down. Thank you. Finally, it only remains for me to introduce to you a new member of staff. 
Her appointment especially concerns you, the lower school, as she will be teaching history to the first, second and third years and will also be the third year head. I'm sure you'll join me in welcoming Miss Partridge to Grange Hill. Again, didn't you? What on earth is going on here? It's all right, Mr. Bronson. I think I've got the answers. All three of them. You, you and you. Mrs. McCluskey's office. Mr. King? Can somebody do something with this? It's out of the pond, shall I take it back? Good lad. Are you all right? You sure? All right. right, back to your places. Boys, now! Back in your line. That's it. It's the most all right, excitement's over. Back into line. You were watching. Quiet, please. I'm trying to get your bag, then. Your bag. He's lying. You took the wrong one, you idiot. You said you didn't pull on it. Yeah, it might have done. But you can see it belongs to, can't you? Aunt Jones. Yeah, a third year. Oops, so you would kill me for it, eh? What is it? Yes, this is Mrs. McCluskey. Oh, no. Just a minute, please. Your year head will have to deal with you. Well? We don't know she's, miss. Second years? Mrs. Regan, room 43. Now what? Uh, please, miss. It was Mrs. Regan who sent us to you. Will you please leave this office? I'm in the middle of a very important phone call. Tell Mrs. Regan I'll speak to her later. Yes, miss. I'm sorry. Please go on. Exploring your horizons, are we, Jones? Sir? It wasn't my fault, sir. Someone hung my bag up there. Well, you're lucky it was me came along and not Mr. Griffiths. The caretaker? He's been lurking about all morning, ready to pounce on somebody. I doubt whether he'd have been as understanding as I've been. Thank you, sir. Mm. Just a minute. One good turn deserves another, don't you think? Sir. Good. Now, listen, I want to talk to you about doing something for the school. All right, don't panic. Something you're good at, swimming. Are you listening to me, son? Sir, I've got a tutorial group with Mr. Bronson. Well, that wasn't what I asked you, was it? I'm going to be late. You just explained to Mr. Bronson you were talking to me. Any problems, I'll vouch for you. Now, listen. Anderton. Barrett. Bowen. Mr. King, you've got the wrong register, sir. All those kids are in R2. You're right. Sorry, E2. You weren't to know, sir. Being new and all. <laughs> I'll try not to let it happen again. Now then, two minutes. See if you can contain yourselves for two minutes. So Mrs. McCluskey has better things to do than waste time dealing with you. I'm not surprised. I had enough of you three last year to last me a lifetime. Any disruption, vandalism, bullying, and we always knew where to look. Oh, yeah. We were the only ones that didn't think wrong. I don't mean high spirits and mischief. I'm talking about unpleasantness. If anything nasty happened involving your year, we always knew Imelda Davis was at the bottom of it. And that's just the sort of reaction I'd expect from you. Really, I despair. You're a spiteful piece of work, Imelda. And the shame is that you, Helen, and you, Georgina, allow yourselves to be led by her. Because you're not beyond hope. If you can be separated from her. Yes. Maybe it's as well Mrs. McCluskey referred you back to me, because I have an idea which might achieve just that. Hey, you down there. You smoking? Hey, I'm talking to you. Biff! Oh, Oi! Wallbridge. Yes, sir. Webb. Yes, sir. Julia Glover. Stand up, please. New Horizons. 
sir. Our recently acquired masterpiece at the front of the building. Nothing to do with me, sir. You are your father's daughter, are you not? And it is he, I am given to understand, who has so generously donated it to us. Laura Regan, stand up. Daughter of our games mistress, Mrs. Regan. She who was so quick off the mark in assembly this morning. You see, as your new form tutor, I have made it my business to know who you are, G3. Even those of you with less illustrious parents, there will be no favoritism in my class. Sit down. I am, as you are doubtless aware, a strict disciplinarian. I am also fair. Sorry, mate, sir. Jones or Kendall? Sir? The only two names absent on the register. Which one are you? Jones, sir. Sit yourself down then, Jones, and take a detention for arriving late. No, sir. No, sir. It wasn't my fault, sir. No, sir. You asked Mr. Baxter. I will do no such thing, sir. You have arrived late. That is all that concerns me. And you will serve a detention because of it. That's not fair, sir. A no. week of detention. Now let that be an end to it. No, I won't do it. What? Yeah, it was a go. Sir. You can't re-register, you're too late. Well, I haven't. What are you here for, then? I've come to get my name on your register. What? I've been transferred by Mrs. Regan. To our class? Is he always this quick? That's right, fat boy. I'm going to eat two now. Oh, no. I thought you could keep your mouth shut. I never told no one nothing. Didn't have to with your fog or northern voice. Oh, I've dropped oh. it. Oh dear, I've trodden on it. Oh, that's mine! Hey, what's going on? Nothing, sir. Just an accident. Oh, hold him, Mr. Baxter. Hold him. Oh. Thought you'd walk away from it, didn't you? Acted as if I wasn't there, but I know this one. Yeah, I think we all know Danny Kendall, Mr. Griffiths. What's he been up to this time? Smoking. To actually catch him smoking? Well, I didn't exactly see him, but I could smell him. Is this true? You smell his fingers or his breath? No, I'd rather not. All right, we'll sort it out when we get there. You're heading in the right direction. Come on. Mrs. McCluskey? No, Miss Partridge is year head. Oh, she's new, isn't she? She is. I dare say she could have done without meeting Danny Kendall on her first day at Grange Hill. Still, she'll have to meet him sometime. All right, Kendall, there's no rush. Hello, Jones. Been a naughty boy, have we? No, sir. I arrived late for my tutorial group. Well, didn't you explain to Mr. Bronson about our chat about the swimming team? He wouldn't let me. You mean he sent you up here for being late? No, sir. He put me on detention. And I said I wouldn't do it. Oh, you did, did you? Listen, you see Miss Partridge yet? No, sir. She's not there. Right. Don't you move from that spot till I get back. It goes for you and all. I'm not going to do it, you know. I have detention. Big deal. If you don't do it, don't do it. But why tell Bronson you're not going to do it? Don't make sense. All right, you're so clever. Why was Baxter bringing you to see Miss Partridge? He wasn't. He thought he was. But I was coming to see her anyway. Find out what form I'm in. Well, I can tell you that. G3, same as me. How do you know? Because you're after me on the register. Jones, Kendall. That's it, then. I'm going home. What for? If I show up in Bronson's class now, I'm going to get sent straight back here for being late. Go home to you. See you tomorrow, if I fancy it. Go and see Mr Baxter, by any chance. With Mr Bronson, I think. Well, could you fetch him for me, please, quickly? He told me to wait here, miss. Well, I'm telling you to go and fetch him. Well, what if he's not there, miss, and I'm not here when he gets back? I'll vouch for you. I do carry some authority in this school. Now move! But, Morris, I'm not criticising your handling of the situation. Then why 
Why are you here, Jeffrey? Because I feel responsible. It was me that made the kid late. I mean, surely that's got some bearing on the matter. On the contrary. It is almost entirely without relevance. Hey? Eh? The punishment which Jones incurred was not so much for his misdemeanor as for his willful defiance of my authority. Yeah, but don't you see, because of the circumstances, the kid probably felt justified showing a bit of defiance. In which case, I acted entirely correctly. Surely you as a sportsman should understand that. I'm sorry, I don't follow that. The decision of the referee is final, hmm? Regardless of the rights and wrongs of any situation, and why? Because such men stand as the embodiment of the law. If their word is subjected to challenge, the whole structure of order starts to crumble. Oh, come on, that's all right for the playing field. Are you telling me that the same principle should not apply elsewhere? The teacher should carry any less authority than that carried by mere umpires of mindless ball games? No. I'm saying that by insisting you're right when you're wrong won't get your respect, it'll get your resentment. Now, Jones is not normally a disobedient boy. I told you to stay put! That's all the information I have at the moment. I'll get back to you. Come in. Do you want to see me? It's about Mr. Humphreys. Oh, yeah? He's been involved in an accident. Oh, dear. His car was in the middle of a six-car pile-up on the motorway. Is he badly hurt? He's dead. He's what? Killed on impact. Better not let anyone catch you. Don't worry, won't be long. Just checking to see if the frog's all right. And is it? Yeah. No thanks to Melvin Davis, man, you. Look. I'm sorry about your game. Well, it wasn't your fault. Oh! Uh, it's a big old spider on that stand, look! Yeah, I know. I love spiders. I was always playing with them back home. You weren't. I were. That's when I got my nickname Ziggy. Do you remember that Dave Bowie record, Ziggy and the Spiders from Mars? No. Mm -hmm. This one's a beauty. It's horrible. No. What you do that for? Hey, bye, gum. I don't know. Can't seek to help smashing things. That weren't a thing. That were alive. Well, it's not now. Is that all you can say? Don't you care about living things? The only thing I care about is the mess it's made on the sole of my shirt. Oh, really? Imelda! <laughs> well, while well, you're in there, you may as well wash it off, hadn't you? I hope you dry, you punk. I'll get you, you 